let it be, you know, our intention to use this info shared really to uplift us, to uplift others, to help us all in our journeys. And here's what I'm going to cover. Scorpio energy, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Scorpio through the 12 houses. So everyone can really see how this energy plays out in your own life based on your chart placement. How do you use Scorpio energy for good? Body parts and body systems that are ruled by Scorpio, as well as imbalances that show up in that particular sign. Self-care practices that help Scorpio channel, just channel your Scorpio energy. Herbal medicine that encourages, that encourages balance for Scorpio. Setting Scorpio intentions and affirmations. Scorpio is in all of us, every single one of us. I know a lot of the astrology apps really only show the signs that have planets, which makes it seem like if you don't have a planet in a particular sign, like you don't have that energy. That's not the case. You have, I have, we all have the 12 signs, all have the planets and everything else. Scorpio, the eighth sign of the zodiac and the tropical astrology, you know, the Northern hemisphere, it occurs in the middle of autumn. Like all fixed signs, it has like a concentrative energy and power to it. There's a stability, a stable quality to all of the fixed sign energies. And with Scorpio, that stability burns intensely. Ruled by the planets Mars and Pluto, Scorpio, while a water sign, it has a fiery nature. It is like water, like that's near its boiling point, close to eruption. Mars is the planet of war, the planet that rules action and fight and desire and assertion. Pluto is the planet of the underworld, um, ruling transformation and transmutation and transcendence. Marge urges us towards battle and Pluto, you know, points us towards the only war worth fighting, the one between the personality and the soul. So often we think that our battles are against the world, you know, against the systems, against the perpetrators, the violators, but as above, so below, as within, so without. Let us not be distracted or delusional to think that the wars we create with people within our families against populations in the planet are not reflective of the internal struggles we're having within. Each time we think we're preserving some ideal, we have some, you know, we have to ask ourselves, what part of the self am I really trying to preserve? The temporary personality, aka the ego, or the timeless soul? These aspects of our nature do not have to be in conflict, nor do the pursuits of them have to be contradictory. So often with the personality, ego, I'm gonna use those interchangeably, we're attached to, you know, trying to protect and sustain the titles we identify with. Man, woman, non-binary, doctor, lawyer, healer, teacher, politician, radical, empath, leader, spiritual, religious, victim, survivor, black, white, brown, indigenous, mixed. How much do these identifiers mean when our lifetimes are countless? When we've likely, literally, through our soul's journey, been and done everything. You have been every title. You have done every deed. You have been in every person's shoes. The soul carries the memories. The personality in this lifetime is short-sighted, forgetful, and represents but an imperceptible fraction of your expansive being. The personality ego likes definition, likes really clean and clearly defined boxes to which to organize itself, others, and to see where it fits into society. The personality ego wants to fit in. The soul always belongs. Many of our internal struggles are because we are trying to fit and stay in tight spaces that cannot contain us. So much of our world battles are because we are trying to force others to do the same. Everyone is telling everyone else, this is the right way to live. Every identifier, every belief, every position the personality attaches itself to is a limit. The personality ego creates ceilings where the soul has none. The soul has one concern to be the I am that I am. God, infinite, uncontainable, unconditionally loving. Much of the scorpion's evolution is like, you know, it's like the spaceship launching into space. You know, it's propelled by mighty force. And as it ascends, it has to shed layers, lighten its load so it can go faster and further. When it finally reaches its galactical destination, it's been radically changed looks nothing like it did when it was on earth. The spaceship is designed to shed its parts and release them as it ascends and transcends this atmosphere. Scorpio energy is equally designed to do the same, though it, we admittedly struggle in the practice. Scorpio is the sign of death, rebirth and regeneration. It has three levels to its evolution. The lower mind, 
Sorry, I'm still letting folks in. The lower mind being that of the scorpion, the higher mind being that of the eagle, and the transcendent mind being that of the phoenix. Visualize all three. You know, the nature of the scorpion with its tail pointed toward its own back. <laughs> this is the Scorpio that's vindictive, jealous, unforgiving, resentful, and biting. When it hurts you, it hurts itself. Next, we have the eagle soaring high in the sky, closer to spirit, while still on the lookout of what's happening below. This is the Scorpio who rises above, who instead of taking everything, you know, so personally, so defensively, can look at it with a bird's eye view and see that other people's actions and motivations are about them, not a personal attack on you or your character. This Scorpio might forgive, but never forgets. Lastly, we have the Phoenix, from death risen through the ashes and no longer on your level. <laughs> this Scorpio has been raked through the fire and resembles nothing like its former form. People who knew it way back when wouldn't even recognize it now. Situations that once found it once found threatening before don't even come into, come into its new experience. This is the mighty Scorpio who teaches us all how to change, who shows us that change is not only possible, but worth it and reaps many rewards. We can follow the path of this Scorpio's ashes. Every change requires a death. We have to make space for that which we are inviting in. Two conflicting ideas, beliefs, or identities cannot exist in the same space at the same time. One must go. The Phoenix Scorpio teaches us that what's dying, what needs to be released, is like the dead weight of those spaceship panels. We, I'm sure there's a technical name. <laughs> we can't ascend or transcend if we can't let go. What is the one thing or what are the things, two things that are required for change, for rebirth? Dr. Maya Angelou said that of all the virtues, courage is the most important one. Mars gives us that. So what's next? Radical honesty. And this is where I believe Pluto plays a pivotal role. Pluto situates our personality soul battlefield inside is what I envision, like a dark tunnel with only a pinhole's worth of light, if that much. To escape the harsh realities of the tunnel, you have to first realize that you are imprisoned and you have to be radically honest with yourself in admitting that you, your personality ego, is what deceived and entrapped you. You will not be released, will not transcend until you admit, submit, and surrender. Admit the cycles, beliefs, ideas, thoughts that hold you back. Submit to your soul's purpose and longings and let go of everything you thought you knew. Some people choose the path of evolution. Others choose to make their tunnels cozy and comfy. Both are okay because there's no wrong way to live a life. The people who choose to make their tunnels comfy and cozy, they live with the devil they know without realizing that the devil they don't know when you've become the phoenix doesn't even exist. When you choose the stagnation, which is painful, over change, you never reach joy. Some of the traits of Scorpio that prevent it from leaning into transformation are its incredible ability to endure. It can tolerate unspeakable degrees of pain. It's secrecy because that requires radical honesty. It's secrecy because that requires radical honesty about its limitations. It's resistance to vulnerability because it's unthinkable for a warrior, Mars, to reveal its weak spots. It's judgment because a miscalculation could bring death. And it's pride because it longs to come out on top. When Scorpio energy is balanced, it's powerful. It's passionate about causes that matter. Its intensity is used for the ascension of all instead of destruction. It's loyal, it's radically honest. It ushers, its energy ushers others into their healing. It chooses to surrender instead of picking up the sword. It's strong, it lets go with ease. It supports others in their, in their transformations. And it admits its wrongs, not from a place of like being proactively defensive, like it would definitely rather point out its own faults than have you do it, but rather from a place of self-analysis, leaning into the change that will soon be required. When Scorpio energy is imbalanced, it's brutally honest and notice the difference between the types of honesty. It can turn violent, it's jealous. Aren't we always jealous of those who exude more audacity to be themselves when we're knowingly holding ourselves back? It's vindictive, it's prideful, and there's always a storm of brewing. There's always a battle and it's causing trouble as opposed to resolving its own internal conflicts. 
Now we'll go through and look at Scorpio through the houses. So keep these energies and these things in mind as I'm going around the chart. And this is where, you know, Scorpio shows up for you in your natal chart. This is where you have that, that storminess, that endurance, the power to transcend what holds you back. So these are the astrological houses. And of course, everything like these, we're just doing signs and houses, but everything changes to certain degrees when we bring in the planets. So I'm going to go around the wheel and talk about what each of the house houses represent in terms of like, this is the area of life and the personality that it represents, and then discuss what it means to have the sign of Scorpio in that house. I also reference the rising sign too, because that really colors the whole chart too. This is the first house. The first house is the first place of action in our identities. It's the framework of you know who we are, our outlook on the world, and how we naturally demonstrate our identities. It also represents our appearance, our disposition and manner, our body's constitution, and our natural forms of initiative and leadership, and how we naturally express ourselves. Scorpio rising. Um, this is a Scorpio who likely faces many challenges in the course of a lifetime to tame the lower, more vindictive personality-driven self. With Scorpio being a sign of secrecy, the Scorpio rising can be withholding of what's really going on from a protective and a defensive stance. This person knows highly perceptive, intuitive, knows how to play their cards. While the battles may not be perceptible to the public, the war wages on within. There is a ruthless endurance and resilience to this placement as a Scorpio energy will do everything it could do to conquer itself and its foes. And once it does, it becomes a great healer for all to witness. It's a beautiful thing to be in the Scorpio's life and to witness their total transformation. This is the second house. This is the house of material security. It's how we all feel secure and stable while being in these physical bodies, living on planet earth in this lifetime. It's the tangible things that matter with this house that helps us to feel secure. It's our resources, our money, our possessions, the things we own and value, our spending and earning capacity, and our desire to control the things and people within our reach, because if we can control them, then that, if we believe we can control them, that helps us feel secure. It's also though, you know, it's your giftedness and how you can draw from your own innate personality and skills to create the things that help you feel materially secure. So now this has Libra rising. So remember that where Scorpio shows up on the chart, there's a need for death and regeneration. Just keep that in mind. Keep the three levels of Scorpio evolution in your mind. Um, Scorpio in the second house likely begins its journey very scarcity mindset driven. With material security, you know, we often think that we need to hold on, withhold, not share and keep everything to ourselves. And this is like money, right? This is the currency and lifetimes that we're living. <laughs> it's fear driven. And the start of the person on this journey likely doesn't remember what spiritual abundance and security feels like. That's the, the journey the Scorpio is traveling to release instead of hoard, to keep the channels of giving and receiving open and flowing to share the spirit of generosity instead of withholding. This person could literally suffocate themselves and stagnate their energy because, by accumulating stuff uh, because this house you know, also represents our earning capacity. I think of that as like, what can I do for myself within my own gifts, my own abilities to earn? Scorpio is a healing sign. One way to use its gifts is to make or to help someone and with Libra on the rising, which is very creative, um, very artistic. It's really like make something beautiful that helps someone renew themselves pretty much in the same way that you've been renewed. Um, after you've come through the fire, whatever storm that was, you can show others how to do the same way, do it the same way that you did it. Third house, this house is all about like how we think based on the people we associate with in our early environment. In this house is how our assumptions and our perceptions of our world were first created and how we exchanged and assimilated information in that early environment. It's not so much, you know, whether or not someone is intelligent, it's more about how did you form your unique intelligence. Um, this house also signifies your early education, your early learning environment, siblings and your attitude towards them. Like think about your, your relationships with your siblings, they shape what you think about the world and what relationships with others are like. That also represents short journeys and trips, memory, 
perception, speech, how you express yourself through writing, speaking, and other forms of communication. And, and you're taking for granted skills. We often take for granted the things that are closest to us. So now we have Virgo on the rising, Scorpio in the third. I see over analysis of what everyone says to the Scorpio with Virgo on the rising. Virgo is so drawn to perfectionism, is hypercritical of itself and others. And Scorpio is highly defensive when it's insecure and it's in its lower form. This combination could make this person very quiet about its opinions and for fears of being judged or being wrong. I see the person wanting to reach, to research absolutely everything. Like there's a quality of preparedness for the battle with Scorpio. So they will try to learn about every topic to be ready for the verbal exchange. Scorpio here can escalate, you know, it can be very quiet. It's like this calculating quietness. Scorpio can escalate every conversation into a full-blown battle. Full-blown battle. Also depends on where Mars is, especially when, you know, that Virgo rising feels like it's in the right. Um, just for the fun of the fight, Virgo can escalate a conversation. Just keep in mind, like if this is your placement and that that gets tiring, not, every, like, not everybody wants to argue. Sometimes folks just want to talk, <laughs> but Scorpio can take it to a, 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 like 100 really quickly. The memory is also impeccable here. Like no detail is missed or forgotten. Fourth house, this house is all about home and domestic affairs, both the childhood homes, you know, we grow up in and the type of home environment we're likely to create as adults. It's our family, our upbringing, our needs for, like our family of origin, um, our needs for peace and privacy, real estate, ancestry, lineage, and the subconscious programming that we learn from our families. How do we feel about what we experienced in our families and what action do we take to either perpetuate or release ourselves from those records? Leo is on the rising. So here's the Scorpio battlefield, you know, it's family and really letting go of the programming that we're all subject to in our childhoods. You know, the Scorpio deeply desires to break free and be their own person, but there's an extra dose of challenge here with Leo on the rising. Leo's the performer of the Zodiac, needing attention, not a bad thing for its validation, we all do. <laughs> and sometimes Leo falls into the trap of putting on costumes to get that attention instead of being its vulnerable, radiant self. Um, Scorpio is learning that courage is not to put on the armor, it's rather to take it off. Fifth house, this is the house of creativity. Another way to think of this house is what do you do that leaves your mark on the world? It's your self-expression, it's your I was here and here's proof of my existence. It's your, you know, the things that bear your name and what you're creating, your personal stamp, like for some that's children, for others like Ava DuVernay, that's for films. It also represents love affairs and play, recreation, theater, drama, amusement, speculation or gambling. And in some ways there's an underlying quality about our self-worth with this house because we tend to associate worthiness with what we can do, what we can make, what we can create in our society. It's also the house of hidden karma because what you do put out will likely return to you through that which you create. So cancer rising, the Scorpio placement could bring a good, a good number of love affairs for the play of it, for the secrecy and the deception of it, for the thrill of the chase, for the intensity of it, for the revenge of it, but definitely not for the love of it. Cancer on the rising feels, you know, most at home in the embrace of another, and this Scorpio may gravitate toward another. Fiercely loving, loyal, and protective of their children, be they, you know, reproductions of the body or creations of the mind. Scorpio here is highly possessive and wants to control. It has difficulty honoring that once something comes through you, you know, it has a life of its own. Our creations are not ours, rather they're gifts. Um, we are the vessels that bring them into the world. So every time we birth something, we also birth ourselves. The act of creating, laboring, um, and birth and could be a highly transformative experience of Scorpio will allow. Sixth house is the house of health, self-care, and our capacity to handle the mundane day-to-day -day work. How do we adjust? How do we um, resist or become overwhelmed by life's demands? Everything in this house is under our control. It's your work, your health, your food, your clothing, your comforts of life, your pets, your employer, employees, 
dependence, working conditions. What happens here basically determines how and if we're able to be of service to others from a place of fullness and not emptiness. Everything in this house contributes to our capacity to work, serve, and be healthy. Gemini on the rising, because this is a house that also like it rules work and what you do on the day to day. I could see something, I went to a different place with this house. Like I could see something like forensics. You know, Gemini on the rising needs this constant mental stimulation to feel satisfied. And Scorpio can like swan dive into the darkness, the most shadowy aspects of human nature, not afraid of the blood, the gore, nor the tragic circumstances that, that may have created it. It's investigative and intriguing and stimulating work that Scorpio here likes, birth work, death work, um, work that's in between worlds and deals with the dark and light. Seventh house, this, is, this house is all about how we behave in one-to-one -one relationships. It's our closest relationships, those with spouses and business partners and known enemies. Think about like the enemies that you know are the ones that you've, you've had a battle with. <laughs> Something's gone down. It's our marriages, our partnerships, our business relationships, other close relationships that are not family unless you also work with them, not friends or acquaintances unless you also work with them. This house represents our cooperation with others who are close to us or a lack of cooperation with them. It's our we consciousness as opposed to I am consciousness of the first house. You are in partnership in this house. It rules the lower courts. Like think about small claims courts. You know, you're suing or you're being sued by someone who's close to you. This house is all about how you learn about yourself through those close relationships. Taurus rising, intimate relationships are highly transforming. There will be arguments, there will be wounds, there will be losses, there will be change. Scorpio is learning cooperation with others. And when, you know, when we're in intimate relationships as like a part of the journey is kind of dissolving into each other a bit. You compromise, you find common ground. And here Scorpio could do well in partnership when it realizes that not every concession is an act of defeat. That what you gain in growth and renewal is more than worth what you've sacrificed. More than your ego are on the line. When there are relationship losses because of that Taurus rising, you know, Taurus is like the most like personally possessive sign. It could take it as a huge personal devastation. Breakups rock this placement. And in so doing, we have to be mindful of like how we allow, how we allow them to change us. How do we allow relationships and breakups to change us? Do we hold on to the losses and never trust again? Or do we let go and do we grow and see where the next relationship can take us? I've seen Scorpio energy here, like, like keep track of everything that someone else has done to it in a past relationship. And then you bring that energy into the next one, keeping their guards up, not really allowing themselves to fall in love fully with the next person. Or, you know, we can relate this to business too. And that's a hardening, like that's not what we want to encourage. <laughs> Relationships do require, you know, our honesty about how we contribute to the dynamic. Eighth house, this house is all about how people save themselves from my perspective. This is the, you know, about the Christian expression, Jesus saves, but here you save yourself. This is the house where people seek inner stability, emotional and soul security by spiritual, magical, material means. So some people turn to religion, some people turn to sex, some people turn to the occult, some people turn to money in the form of joint finances, loans, or inheritances. It is also that house of like what happens when we merge intimately with another where do you turn when you need to feel emotionally and spiritually secure? It's also the house of our deeply felt personal experiences, our rebirths, our inner deaths, because when you realize, you know, what the means you've been turning to, to feel emotionally secure, it's not serving you or working for you. You have to die to that old self and be reborn. This is the natural house of Scorpio. Aries is on the rising. Scorpio's natural home, you know, coming straight off the heels of our intimate relationships, this house, you know, it does rule how we find that inner peace within intimacy, you know, sharing our resources and our beliefs and lives with another. It's how you use your combined magic to create. Can we retain our unique identities within this intimacy, this merging? Do we feel safe enough to do so? You know, when beliefs shift, can we let them die for others to take up that space? Can we do that while we're merged with others? Can we release ourselves from obligation? Lots of questions in this house, you know? Or does the whole arrangement really have to die? Have, have, does it have to be obliterated in order for you to be reborn? Ninth house, this house is all about how we choose to learn about ourselves. It's the super conscious mind. 
and education we choose. It's going beyond our horizons for self-discovery and identification, you know, moving from the eighth house of regeneration, death and rebirth. This house is where you're like, okay, I'm reborn. And now what does this new me have to do? You need to learn about this new self, this new identity. So this house, you know, is associated with our religious and philosophical attitudes, foreign travel, long journeys, educational experiences you choose like higher education and apprenticeships. It's also your intuition and your spiritual visions and publication. It's the house of self-understanding and those experiences that take you outside of what you think you know. Pisces is on the rising, coming through the eighth house of fire. You know, Scorpio here desires to understand the deeper meanings of life through the lens of Pisces, the rising, which wants to understand our oneness. What unites us instead of separates us? The quintessential phrase here being, you know, we are more alike than we are unalike. Here, Scorpio's quieter side is seen as it retreats from outward battle and travels and reads and observes the world and seeks out new truths. I see the Scorpio's renewal being one of more ease and grace than say like with the seventh or the fourth house, fourth house placements we talked about. 10th house, this house is all about what you do in the world. It's your house of career and vocation. It's the work you get paid to do, the work that you say, like when you introduce yourself to others at a networking networking event. Hey, I'm Salima, I'm an herbalist, astrologer, a spiritual teacher. Like how do you fill in those blanks for yourself? The 10th house is also our reputation, our position in the world, how the public views you and your calling to contribute to society. Because it's so forward facing, it's also the house of approval and like whose approval do you seek? Aquarius rising, Scorpio is one of the power signs and you know this placement in the 10th house of career and reputation, you better believe Scorpio will desire, will try and likely succeed at rising to the top of whatever it's chosen field is. There's always an underlying energy of Saturn in the 10th house, which rules achievement and rewards effort. Scorpio has the stamina, the endurance, not so much the patience, but it certainly has the will to reach positions of power. Take care to climb the ladder with integrity and not be so hungry and competitive that you dominate over others because how high you climb will be how hard you fall. And we have the 11th house. This house is all about who we are in group settings. Do we feel secure and stable when we're around friends, acquaintances, and other group settings? Are we only secure when we're around like-minded people? It's the house of how we learn about who we are when we're in an us collective situation. It's associated with our group involvement, friendships and social relationships, creative group expression and humanitarian ideals, global awareness. It's our hopes and wishes, our projects and ambitions for the collective. It's like that where we feel like we're most self-satisfied because it's kind of like that save the world energy where we we're, we all innately want to do something good that will change the world. Capricorn rising here. Capricorn likes relationships that are useful. <laughs> there is There has to be a clear reason as to why you're in its life. So Scorpio too can like, it kind of take you or leave you. Like Scorpio, again, with Mars as the God of war, as one of its ruling planets can view relationships as a threat can sometimes wait for you to mess up or to reveal that you have ulterior motives. So Scorpio here is serious and the transformation for it is to realize because this is a house of collective work, you know, that no one does anything alone. Scorpio here is learning um, to trust others, to see the value in having other people's energy involved in what you're trying to make, how you're trying to make this world a better place. That it's a collective effort. And 12th house, this house is all about what lies in our subconscious that needs to be awakened so that we can journey to the next life, the next soul cycle in our evolution. Remember, you know, not remember, I, I like to envision this house as that there's a mysterious ripple if you envision a body of water, but it's not the ocean, that there is a ripple on the surface of the water, but it's from an unknown source. Like you don't see any fish, you don't see anything moving. But it's like, what is that ripple? Where is that coming from? This is the house of that unknown source. It's the things that are so ingrained in us. You know, we barely notice they're unfolding, but they show up likely in bothersome ways in our lives, calling for our attention. Just because it's underneath the surface 
doesn't mean it's unreachable. This house is affiliated with the subconscious mind, our spirituality and psychic abilities, unconscious habits, refinement, hospitals, prisons, self undoing, its influences, you know, that are not under our control, but they still require our transcendence. Sag rising, Sag like gives off an adventurous, like joyful, life-loving demeanor. Don't be fooled. There is still an underlining storminess inside the Scorpio in the 12th house. I think this placement feels an urgency to transform or else. There's this fear of stagnancy, of entering and exiting this lifetime as the same person, a fear that the soul's mission in this lifetime will not have been fulfilled and you have to do it all over again. For this reason, you know, this Scorpio on the 12th seeks experiences that push it beyond its limits, broaden its horizons, and they take the lessons learned, like, like learned in the world, like into the spirit to widen their spiritual mind. Adventure is like a spiritual practice that awakens this Phoenix. Scorpio energy, how do we use it for good? You know, Scorpio sees and embraces all sides of life. It can handle the darkness, the shadow, the things that others consider taboo. They have the realest conversations about topics that most people prefer to avoid. Children with Scorpio dominant energy do things that most would consider shocking or inappropriate for their age. They grow up fast. They're independent. They start adulting sooner than other signs. They have so much courage in their younger years. And then I don't know, I don't know what happens specifically, but life happens, right? Hurts happen and the inner storms roll in and start brewing. I literally see storm clouds above the heads of people who have dominant Scorpio energy. They start to get stuck in the battle between the personality, ego, and the soul begins. And maybe that's like what's happened is that because they had so much fun and like really like came out with that, you know, that courage came out with a bang, pursuing what the personality wanted in their younger years, that they feel life won't be as fulfilling if they change to pursue now what the soul desires. And that's the big lie of the ego, right? That's the essence of all the attachment the personality has. But those Scorpios who make it through the battle, who are soul victorious, realize that life is more brilliant, more satisfying, more fulfilling, more glorious. Scorpio of all the signs has the ability to show the entire world that change is worth it, that there's greater fulfillment on the other side that yes, you will die to your old self, but you don't want to be that person anyway. Honestly, like the only words I have to urge you Scorpio's energy for good are to do the thing that you are most good at already. It's like to remember that, recognize when the storm clouds are above your own head and find the eye of that storm. See the point of clarity and let it be the North Star that guides you out of chaos. Scorpio's intensity and fear of vulnerability, you know, thinks in making that step toward change and transformation is bigger than it actually is. Like for a sign like Taurus, change is huge. It takes a lot of efforting. But for Scorpio, it only requires your yes. When you know the next step, you need to take it. When you take it, the clouds dissipate. Medical astrology for Scorpio. So this is what it's gonna start looking like when Scorpio is out of balance. So in medical astrology, all of the signs have rulerships over body parts and the planets. Uh, we're not going into detail here. Rule the physiology and the, and the pathology. The planets all alter the functions of those body parts in different ways, but I'm just going to talk about the sign and what some of the common physical ailments are for the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio rules, and these all have co-rulerships with other signs too, so it's not a, it's not a hard and fast that it only rules those things or that there's not other rulerships that also rule these body parts. Scorpio rules the generative system, reproductive organs, colon, urinary system in its eliminative capacity. All channels of, including the nose, the rectum, the sweat glands, reptilian brain. Scorpio rules the bladder, the urethra, the genital organs in general. Also the rectum, the descending colon, sigmon, flexure, the prostate gland, the nasal bones. It can get really granular. Um, Scorpio imbalances can manifest as nasal catarrh, that's congestion, adenoid problems, polyps, diseases of the womb and ovaries, various venereal diseases and enlargement of the prostate gland, irregularities of the menses, leucorrhea, um, kidney stones and gravel, toxic conditions affecting the heart, the nose, the throat, lower bowel conditions, including hemorrhoids, anal fissures, reproductive organ disease and dysfunction, 
critical life-threatening conditions, malignancies, abscesses, obsessive compulsive disorders, the need for life-saving surgeries, replacement of body parts by transplant or prosthes prosthesis. And also like take all this with a grain of salt, like don't let these things kind of plant seeds in you. That's not the intention, but it does help in medical astrology. It helps us to be able to reverse engineer. Like if there's pain and imbalances are present physically, it helps us to re reverse engineer where stuff is happening, both in the body, but also in the chart. And you can pinpoint like the emotional work that you have to do in addition to you know, like the physical restoration, because the chart shows us what area of life this all of this emotional tension is occurring in. I'm notice that a lot of the physical imbalances are related to toxic buildup, not letting go. The most common issues I see with Scorpio energy is infrequent bowel movements, not letting go, and reproductive, reproductive problems like your birthing of yourself, your rebirthing of yourself can, not an absolute, affect your birthing ability. Self-care practices for Scorpio, what balances Scorpio energy? Avoiding um, overindulgence in food, drink, sex, heating and stimulating foods could be avoided. Very little meat, no intoxicants, <laughs> conserve one's energy. Colon cleanses and enemas, again, help with that letting go. Not keeping score of how people have hurt you. Daily forgiveness practice, letting go, collaborating with others, um, channeling that urge to fight, cuss out <laughs> to something else. And when you think about Scorpio and where it is in your chart, you know, ask yourself, where do I need renewal? How do I save myself? Where are like my actions? Because sometimes it can be hard to see where we're having this storminess, but like where are my actions in my world reflective of what I need to let go? Like that can be seen really easily when it comes to that Scorpio in the second house of accumulating stuff. And so it's like, what values, if you're accumulating stuff and that's your placement, what values are you hoarding that need to be released, if that makes sense? Infusion blend, a couple of things I was thinking about here and keep in mind, I try to keep it simple and blends that are mostly okay for most people, regardless of like medications, but like carminatives are plants that help help the stomach secrete its juices so there's better digestion. Mild laxatives, again, helping with that release. Blood cleansers, blood cleansers, helping with that toxic buildup. Mental clarity, just to help see in the eye of the storm, not focus on the storm. And help like help you put your guard down, put the weapons down. Tulsi or dandelion. I think like Tulsi's are really good, but like antidepressant, it's adaptogenic. It helps us to recover from long periods of stress, but the dandelion leaf could be supportive in the kidneys and also with elimination, right? Rose to open up the heart, cardamom and rosemary, or this is like an or, cardamom, bringing in the, the, the digestive support, rosemary does the same and both bring in like the sense of clarity. You can play with those plants. Um, the original formula that kind of popped in was Tulsi, rose and cardamom. But if you like need the dandelion because you need the support and elimination, you can choose dandelion. If you need rosemary, which is more, Tulsi does that too, more mental clarity, you could bring that in. Or you could also play with all five. And then our tea tox blend, if elimination, is seriously like an issue than not eliminating regularly the tea talks blend on our website at willaremedy.com.